Okay, welcome. So we're going to start by talking about the derivation for the equations for a buck converter. So first of all, a buck converter is going to be used to bring down the voltage. So say going from like 12 volts down to 5 volts if you have a far, uh, car charger or, or something like that. So here is our basic buck converter. So we have our input source and our output source. Here is our load resistance and we have a single pole double throw switch. So either this switch is connected up or the switch is connected down and then I just have the inductor that's going to be our filter. So we see that we basically just have an RL circuit similar to what we had in when we analyze RL circuits back in 240. So let's go look at this in LT Spice really quick. So here is our basic circuit. We can do here's a single pole, single throw switch and here's another one so this combination right here is going to be our single pull double throw switch so if i run this and i look at my voltage right here you see it's going up and down so it's on for a certain amount of time and off for a certain amount of time and then when i look over here you can kind of see well let's that it's basically charging up, charging down, and doing all of this. Okay, so let's go back and look at our basic circuit. So here's our basic circuit, and what we want to do is we want to start with it all discharged and charging up. So here is our starting circuit. Okay, so here's our starting circuit, and we see that it's basically charging up. So our basic equation is, is that our initial voltage was zero, and then our final voltage is going to be equal to V in. And so what we have before, from when we did this in 240, we have the V of T is going to be equal to the V final plus my V initial minus my V final times E to the minus T over tau, where tau was equal to R over L. So depending on the resistance and inductance, it's basically going to be charging up. So what we see is, is we are going to get a plot that looks like this. Okay, but as it's charging up like that, what we're going to do is we're going to hit some little time right here, and we're going to switch it. So now when we switch it, now we're going to switch it to be like this. Okay, so now what we see here is our V initial is going to be some, let's just call it V1, wherever we got to at this point right here. And now our V of infinity is going to be equal to zero. So now what's going to happen is you see that this is going to start discharging down. But again, at this point right here, At this point right here, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to switch it. So what we see here is, is that then it's charging up, charging down, charging up. And you see that it's charging up more than it's charging down. So let's go back and look at our LT spice and see. So here is the state where I'm charging up, I'm charging down, charging up, charging down. Initially... I'm charging up a lot more than I'm charging down because I need to be increasing the voltage. Well, if I do this larger, so you see I'm moving my way up. Eventually, I get to the point up here where the amount that it's charging up is exactly equal to the amount that it's charging down. So this is the steady state condition that I'm trying to get to. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the circuit in the steady state condition. And we're going to use this small ripple 
calculation. So we're just going to look for one period. So basically right in here, we're going to have a certain amount charging up, a certain amount charging down. And what we're after is this ripple, how much is it changing, as well as this DC value. So we're using the small ripple approximation. So what we're doing is we're saying that the maximum of the V ripple, so that's the ripple in my output, is much, much less than my V out. And we're just going to call this my V steady state operation. Okay, so we're going to say that that's different. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the circuit in the two different states. So let's start with this state right here. Okay, so we have the V in, we have the V, and we're just going to call it our steady state operation. We're going to have an L and an R, and we're going to label this as VL. So what we want to do is we're, and the VS is going to be a constant because we're using the small ripple approximation. So we're going to say that my output is always constant, and it's called V steady state. And I'm looking at the voltage right here across my inductor. So we have VL is going to be V in minus V steady state. Since the input is constant, and we're saying that our steady state is constant, that in this state, the voltage across the inductor is just equal to this value right here. Okay. Now let's look at our other state. Okay, so now, again, we're looking for the voltage across the inductor. So in this case, you see that VL equals minus V steady state. So we have these two states of my inductor, okay? Now, the reason we're interested in the inductor is we know what the relationship of the inductor is. So what we see is that the V of an inductor is equal to L times DI DT. Okay, which in this case is going to be equal to V in minus V steady state. Okay, well now I can come in here and just look at this change in current. Oops. Okay, so we're just looking at this current right here. So let's just solve for that. So you see the di dt is equal to V in minus V steady state over L. And so, and then the same thing over here. di dt is equal to minus V steady state over L. Now what we're in, so now let's look at what these plots look like. So we're going to start. by looking at VL. Okay, so in this first time period right here, it's V in minus V steady state. This is a buck converter, so the steady state condition is gonna be lower than my V in. So in this state, it's going to be some value right there. Okay, then I'm gonna come over here to this state and this, whoops, up here, now it's going to be negative. So now this is going to come down to some negative steady state value. And you see I go over, I come up, I go over, I come down. And then it just keeps repeating like this. So this is state one, which is this circuit. And this is state two, which is this circuit. So now we're looking at this value right here. So now let's look at my current. Okay, so what's going to happen is you see that this current gives me a slope. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and change this to assume that it's a small ripple. So now this is di dt. So you see that this is just telling me what my slope is. Okay, so what's going to happen is that my slope, my current, is going to be at some steady state value.
So I'm going to have some I steady state. And in this case, it's going up. In this part, it's going down. And it's going up and going down. And you see that the amount that it goes up has to equal the amount that it goes down. So this change in current here has to equal this change in current there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the steady state operation. And so now if I look right here, okay, that this di dt is going to be equal to vn minus v steady state over L. And right here, it's going to be di dt is equal to minus v steady state over L. So that's telling me how everything is changing. Okay, so now we're going to look at what is called, we're going to call in the books lots of times, it's called inductor volt second balance. Okay, and so what this means is that if I integrate my current, okay, so if I integrate Okay, so what, let's go back and look at this. So we have di dt, okay, and equals vl over l in this case. Let's, let's fix that dt. Okay, so if I come over here and I have di is equal to v over l times dt, and I integrate both sides, and I'm going to integrate this from 0 to 1 period. Okay, so then this is going to be I of Ts minus I of 0. So this is going to be what is the current after 1 period compared to my starting. And we see right here that I have to get back to the same point. So if I started right here and I do one period, I'm back to the same point. So this part here has to be equal to zero if I'm in steady state. So then this is equal to, we can pull out our L's because it's constant, one over Ts times VL. So when we're all done, we see that the integral of v of l dt has to be equal to zero, okay? So that means if I look up here that the area of this part has to be equal to the area of that part. So what we have is we have v, we come up here, so here is this part here. So if I take this and bring it down here, this times my on period, which is going to be my duty cycle times my time, plus, and then I'm coming up here and grabbing this off time, and so it's a negative, so I'm going to have negative V steady state times 1 minus D times Ts is equal to 0. Well, if I want to solve this, because what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find out what is my steady state voltage. So if I come in here, well, I can divide through by this, okay, and then I simplify it. You see that I have V in times D, okay, minus V steady state times D, minus V steady state plus V steady state times D equals zero, okay? So we see that these two cancel off. Okay, and what am I left with? I'm left with V steady state is equal to V in times D. Oh, well that kind of makes sense because if I want to figure out what the average is, so it's going to be on for a certain amount of time and off for a certain amount of time, my average is just going to be the amount that it's on. Okay, so this is my first equation. So this tells me how do I find out 
how I want to set my duty cycle in order to control my voltage. Okay, the next thing that we're after is what is what's called this ripple. Okay, so what we see here is this is equal to di, right? And this is the current going through the inductor, so we can call it dil. Okay, oh, well, here are my equations right here. So let's just use, we could use either one. Let's just grab this first one. So I have dil over dt is equal to V in minus V steady state over L. So delta I L is going to be V in minus V steady state over L times my amount of time, which is going to be equal to D times my T S. Okay, so this is my current ripple. And I see right here that my current in my inductor is equal to the current in the resistor. So now I can convert this into a voltage ripple. Delta V steady state is going to be equal to RL times the delta IL, okay? Which is equal to RL over L times V in minus V steady state times D times T S, okay? So this tells us how much my voltage ripple is. Okay, so, and then this is my answer. So now when I'm analyzing my buck converter, I have two main equations. This tells me my steady state value, and this tells me my ripple. For the simplest case is if I have an inductor and a resistor. Okay, so let's go back and look at LT Spice really quick. So this is my steady state operation. Okay, so this is my steady state operation, and this is my average value right here, which is going to be equal to this voltage times my duty cycle. And then I'm going to have my ripple, which depends on this resistor, this inductor, and the switching time. Okay, and that is the derivation for a buck converter.